I'm a 3D artist, and over the last four months, I've gotten no less than thousands of comments asking me to code my custom models into Minecraft. And to make matters worse, they're not asking anymore, they're demanding. Can I learn the entirety of Minecraft modding before my comment section finds my house? Or am I just gonna embarrass myself in front of 1.2 million people? Oh wait, I already do that every week. It turns out Minecraft has a lot of things. Items, blocks, food, tools, armor, crops, fluids, entities. And each one is exponentially more complicated than the last. So here's the plan. I'm gonna start out by making a custom item and work my way up to a custom boss fight. Now I personally don't really know how to code, but from what I've heard, it doesn't sound like it's that hard. I can probably pick it up in a few. The first thing I need to make is a new item, which can be done on like two lines of code, plus the hundred or so to set up the project in the first place. The item I decided to make was a Damascus ingot, because that's what the point, yeah, funny joke. I've worked a bit with it in real life, so I thought it would be cool to have it in the game. And with that, items are complete. Next up is blocks. Now blocks are a bit more complex since you need an item and a block. I was trying to keep things relatively simple, so I made a Damascus block. I made a Damascus. I ended up making this way more complex for myself because now instead of one file, I need seven of them. The block I made has to have different textures on different sides, so I need one file to make the block, one for the block states, two for the models, and three different textures. And it only gets significantly more complicated from here, so to practice, I made steel ore, steel ingots, and a steel block. Oh, and don't worry about the Amogus Shrine. I had a psychotic meltdown later. We'll talk about it. And speaking of steel, today's video is partnered with World of Tanks. Me and the boy play this a lot back in the day. It's a free-to-play PC game with over 100 million players and 600 different tanks that, by the way, are historically accurate and super detailed. And as a 3D artist, let me just say, I'm a big fan of that. And it's not just the models either, they put a lot of effort into making the mechanics themselves behave authentically based on the vehicle, within reason of course. There's a ton of different environments and it fits pretty much every playstyle. You could be like this guy. Hello there. Or you could sneak around and camp bushes. I'm a bush. As you play more, you get experience and more ways to modify and upgrade your tank. It's basically just doing goofy things with tanks, and honestly, what more could you ask from a game called World of Tanks? It's a lot of fun, so get down to the link in the description, download World of Tanks, and when you sign up, use code TANKMANIA to get a free week of premium, a quarter million credits, and a laundry list of high-level tanks to try out. But that's enough of that, let's get back to the video. Now that I know how to make blocks, I had to make something that's actually useful for once. The next thing I have to make is food. Food is basically just another item, except with some some properties to it, like how much hunger it fills, and what kind of effects it has. I decided to pay my respects to KFC, which carried me through the Mr. Beast project, so I made a KFC meal. The KFC meal item removes the mortal limitations from the player, allowing them to have speed 100 and haste 100. But Big butt, there's a 1% chance you just have a heart attack and die instantly. Now, this isn't supposed to be realistic or anything, so that figure is lowered a little bit, but I think I've got food pretty much figured out, so now it's time to move on to tools. I already had the Damascus sink, oh my, so I decided to make a tool set out of them. The first step for tools is creating a new tier, like diamond or gold, or in this case, that one. It decides what material is used to repair it, how enchantable it is, efficiency, that kind of thing. I don't even know why, but I made all five. The sword, the pickaxe, the shovel, the axe, even the hoe. Maybe it was tedious, but it was all for the greater purpose of making a custom boss later on. I also made the sword summon lightning when the player hits a mob, and while technically you shouldn't be able to hit mobs that are already dead, where's the fun in that, you know? Next on the list is a new set of armor, which works a lot like tools. You need an armor material that defines how much damage and knockback you get, and then four new items for the boots, leggings, chestplate, and helmet. Next you figure out how it looks on the player themselves, and for armor items, that's pretty much it, but we're still a long ways from the custom boss fight, and unfortunately, right after that, things got serious. I finally met the true villain of this video, stairs. Here's the code for the Damascus block. Here's the code for the stairs. Blocks like stairs usually connect with others in a bunch of different ways, which is why they end up so complicated. But I'm not about to let the stairs get the best of me. After way too long, I finally got it working, and to rub it in, I made a fence, fence gate, pressure plate, and slab. And you know what? It was 
pretty easy, actually. But before I could make a custom boss fight, I still had a long ways to go. The next item I needed to make was a custom crop. Now, let's do a bit of audience participation real quick. If you wanted to make a custom crop, what would you make? Because I thought it would be a great idea to grow KFC buckets. Trust me, it only goes much farther downhill from here. Crops are relatively simple, maybe 50 lines of code in total. The main thing is just making a bunch of different ages for it to cycle through as it grows. Next, I need to make some fluid. Now, what kind of fluid will I be adding, you may ask? <laughs> McDonald's Sprite. Fluids are way more complicated than crops because there's a lot more parameters to keep track of, like how fast does it flow? What does the slope look like? What sound does it play? For me, I did the scary cave noises. It's a pretty awful feature, honestly. I made the McDonald's Sprite so that anything that enters it starts glowing, and it also charges creepers because have you ever tasted that stuff? Now that I made some fluids, the real challenge finally begins. What if I told you I could make any custom model into a Minecraft block? What does that imply? Nothing good, honestly. I got a hold of the program that Mojang themselves apparently uses for models called Blockbench. Remember that Among Us shrine I mentioned earlier? It's all coming together, isn't it? I made a quick model since I'm running out of time, and then for the texture work, I decided to go for a mossy, abandoned type look. Hit a few buttons and there she is. She's beautiful. Oh yeah, remember the Among Us body pillow from last video that I had to purchase if I got 30,000 likes? Well, it's been two days and it's over 60 now, so that's $80 well spent. Thanks, guys. And AliExpress doesn't exactly ship overnight. So subscribe if you want to see that. Up to this point, I was pretty much on my own, but I only have a couple days left to go from McDonald's Sprite to Custom Boss, and it was clear I needed some help. Thankfully, I managed to find a real mod developer who was willing to answer some of my questions. Dear Skylar, here's my idea. When the sussy shrine drinks enough McDonald's Sprite, it will begin spawning imposters that kill every living thing in the vicinity and deposit the loot back in the shrine. Hey, Daniel. Please seek therapy. With Skylar's help, I was able to forge onward to the final boss of my project, Entities. Entities can be a lot of things, mostly cows or zombies, but sometimes things like furnaces or crafting tables. These are called tile entities and are tied to a block. They handle all the logical stuff some blocks are able to do, like store items or generate imposters from McDonald's Sprite. This is where it gets extremely complicated, as there's a whole lot of ways you could make one of these things. I've seen 8x8 crafting tables and energy generators. Most of the time, they're using tile entities to make that work. 380 miserable lines of code later, it finally works, and I got to work on the imposter. Mobs can be designed in block bench just like the custom block or even custom items, but the coding is another story entirely. You have to tell it a ton of things like how big the shadow is, whether it should try to swim or just accept it's gonna drown, what sound it plays, I wonder what I'll put for that. And finally, it was time. After days of miserable conditions, thousands of lines of code, it was time to keep my promise and add one of my own custom mobs into the game. This time I did the Wither Spider from this video, but it could easily be any of the others. I got to work and remade the entire thing in Blockbench, but then came the animation. There's absolutely no shot I'm doing trigonometry, so I had to find a better way. Oh, that's useful. Finally, I added a boss health bar by borrowing the Wither's code, and with that, ladies and gentlemen, the Wither Spider is complete. Well, that was a horrible experience. I loved every second of it. If for some horrible reason you want me to add more of my old designs, release this maybe, clean it up a bit, subscribe. Also check out Skylar. He helped me a lot. Link below.